Okay, we'd like to now talk about the inspection that you would go through for a typical machine lathe. Starting with the point of operation, you've got a couple of things here to look at. I call this a chuck guard. It happens to have a collet on it right now, but you could have a chuck that has jaws that, that extend from it. So you want some kind of a shield or a guard that would prevent inadvertent contact with that, with that rotating chuck. And this particular shield does a, does a good job of that. You may be able to see right here that the shield has actually been enhanced or made a little bit longer on the back side here because it was a little too easy to, to stick your hand in on the back side. Again, remember, we're trying to prevent inadvertent contact. So yes, this, this was a shield and it did, it did do a pretty good job. However, if your hand, you can envision possibly a hand being here and slipping into the back side there. So the shop supervisor here did add uh, extended that, that shield, which is really nice. Now from a point of operation standpoint, this, depending on where you're doing your work, this could actually serve as a shield for that. Remember, you're going to be focusing now on where is the point of operation. So if I'm, if I'm bringing my, my uh, carriage in here and I'm working very close to the chuck, the chuck guard will serve as a point of operation guard. As I move out, however, you lose that, that coverage, so to speak. So really what you want to do here is to provide some additional shielding to prevent inadvertent contact. It might be a magnetic base shield. It might be something that attaches to the backside of the lathe that, that travels with the carriage. And so as you're going farther out, it's just keeping, keeping you from inadvertently contacting either the rotating part itself or actually the, the hazard of the tool cutting the part. So the point of operation on a, on a lathe can be, of course it moves, it's not the same as like a drill press or a mill where it's pretty, pretty stationary. This is going to go back and forth. Generally it's going to be fairly close to the chuck, and so your chuck guard will serve, will serve as a good uh, shield for that. Other things that rotate on a lathe, you, you certainly want to be looking at that. The back side of this, you have a you have a handle here. You have a you have a basically a rotating uh, uh, wheel that again inadvertent contact could could possibly cause a, a uh, some damage and some some hazard some harm to you. Excuse me. And it also could be an entanglement hazard. When you have rotating wheels. You have rotating shafts. You've got a uh, lead screw on this, you've got an entanglement hazard, meaning you could get drawn in hair, clothing, this kind of thing. Now, you also have shop rules that will be addressing that from an administrative standpoint. However, machine guarding, the actual physical guarding, is, is still the most effective way to control that. So some kind of a cover on top of this, it can flip up, it can be easily removable, that would prevent um, contact with this or entanglement with that, and then here you have your lead screw, which is going to be rotating when your when your chuck is turning. Now that lead screw does cause an entanglement hazard. It's the, the challenge with lead screws, as you probably know, is how do you how do you cover those? How do you shield those um, in any kind of practical manner? There are uh, curtains. There are there are uh, ways to partially shield those, and you're going to have to really work on that on a case-by-case on a -case basis, on a lathe-by-lathe -lathe basis. New lathes coming in, uh, new lathes that are purchased, you'll see that those are either recessed or pretty well uh, uh, covered, and there's a reason for that. There have been some serious injuries associated with lathe screws, as you probably know. So an old lathe like this, you may have to be creative in terms of trying to, to, trying to cover that to at least to some degree. Any machine controls you're going to be looking at when you're doing your inspections. Here you've got your basically your, your forward and, and, and reverse, and then of course your handle, which, which starts the tool, which starts the, uh, the head turning. So uh, this does not have a on-off button per se. It does not have an emergency stop button. So that's something that this machine is going to need to be uh, retrofitted with, where you would have a mushroom, red mushroom style e-stop, surrounded by a yellow ring, that would be 
probably in this location here, if someone, if an operator is working way out here, this is a small enough lay that you can still, you can still access that. And, and then in an emergency, you would, be, you would be able to hit that with your palm. That's, that's not the case here. Uh, so that would be an enhancement. This, these controls are the older controls, came with the lathe, would need to be, would need to be upgraded. The other thing that this machine, I don't believe, has is a anti-restart device. So it doesn't have magnetic contactors associated with it. If, you're, if the lathe is running, lose power, power comes back on, the lathe is going to restart. So that's something we're going to look at in, as I've been talking, in all machines. The best practice associated with the chuck key, now again, this, this chuck is not it's not something that I would use this on, but if you're using this on, on a chuck, you want to have a spring-loaded chuck key. This one is a, a standard chuck wrench that you've, uh, uh, of course, on a lathe, it's called a wrench. Drill press, it would be the key. On a chuck wrench, they make spring-loaded chuck wrenches so that it can be in it accidentally or inadvertently left in the chuck, and then you would a serious hazard associated with starting that machine if it was left in there. Hard to imagine maybe how that could occur, but certainly possible. With a spring-loaded chuck wrench on a lathe, that cannot happen. It pops right out. It's a, it's a, it requires a little bit more force to use, but is a uh, great uh, safety feature and enhancement for these, for these chuck wrenches. This machine is very stable. You really don't have to worry about anything, any, any, any any movement associated with that, uh, sharp edges. Now I do see that with, with the enhancement here, that there is a bit of a sharp edge on this, on this Lexan here, probably something that, that we want to round out. The original, the chuck shield that was placed on this originally does have nice rounded edges. So this really should be smoothed out a little bit because I can see how someone using this might in fact get cut right on that edge there. It's, it's, it's definitely not as smooth as the, uh, as the original shield there. But any other, any other items like that that, 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 could cause a, uh, that could cause a cut or a laceration. There's no task light here. So we, we're not looking at that. The electrical, electrical comes into the machine in the back there. You just want to take a quick look. Again, remember our, our power is off. We're either, in this case, we would cut the power at the disconnect switch on the wall, and then we would, we would look at that electrical uh, feed coming in, see if it was deteriorated and uh, has dry rot, this kind of thing, and the connection on the back of the motor, on the back of the, uh, of the housing. Make sure that that's intact, because you don't want to have any kind of a shock hazard associated with your electrical power.